welcome everyone to part two of two of this TW 2020 public beta exclusive with AEW. We're here for Bash at the Beach once again within the Sears Center in Chicago, Illinois. We are ready to get things underway after what was an explosive AEW Dynamite. We've got a show rating of 74 for that, so we're going to look to try and beat that for Bash at the Beach. So we kick things off with the AEW Tag Team Championships on the line. It's Paige and Kenny Omega that have put them on the line against best friends of Trent and Chuck Taylor. And it's Kenny Omega and Adam Page that come away with the win, retaining their titles within 14 minutes 30 after Adam Page pinned Trent with the turn the page. Uh, following interference from Pentagon Jr. One third of the Death Triangle along with Ray Phoenix and Pac. And obviously the Lucha Brothers looking to uh, set their sights on the AEW Tag Team Championships. The match got a rating of 77. You can see that Trent and Chuck had uh, great chemistry. And the match itself got the show off to a strong start. The crowd were buzzing as you'd expect with uh, Hangman Alan Page and Kenny Omega teaming up. Seem to have chemistry of their own. It's always TV gold when them two are on. And you can see the segment rating got a bonus from the refereeing of Aubrey Edwards, the road agent work of Arn Anderson. Chuck Taylor was penalised for a poor gimmick. Does Chuck Taylor even have a gimmick? Not too sure, but got a rating of 77. Really happy with that. Solid opener to uh, bash at the beach in front of 11,132 people crammed inside of the Sears Centre. The announcers put over the fact that we'll be seeing Cody, John Moxley, Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson take on Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, Santana and Ortiz in a four on four match. That will be our main event this evening. And that segment rating got 68. Not much to note here. Segment rating got a bonus for the agent work. Van Anderson again, He's doing a lot of work at the moment. Only lasted a minute, and it had Shivani, JR, and Excalibur announcing that. So if we move on to the next segment, it's a quick match. It's the Murderhawk Monster, Lance Archer once again. It's an extremely short match. He defeats Peter Avalon within three minutes, 23. Kind of felt bad for doing this to Peter Avalon, but we need, uh, we need someone else. We need another victim for Lance Archer, and it just so happened to be that Peter Avalon had nothing else to do. So he's got squashed in this one. It's a segment rate of 58, and uh, it was a well executed squash as well from Lance Archer after he defeated him with the blackout. Then we go backstage with Dasha Gonzalez. She says, I'm with Britt Baker and Marty Bell. Can you talk us through that attack last night on Sadie Gibbs after your match, Britt, and why? Marty, after debut, and have you aligned yourself with Britt Baker? And she replies with, uh, excuse me? Firstly, it's Britt Baker, DMD. I worked hard to become a dentist, you know. Also, last night was just strictly business. Marty here wanted a little boost since she's new around here, and I'm more than happy to take her under my wing. And we continue on. Um... Surely there's got to be an easier way of doing this by seeing the whole segment that I've written out. Uh, but Marty responds with, Brit's right, I've worked hard to get here in AEW. I think it's time for me to kick back and take it a little easier. Yeah, I'll step into the ring and fight whoever, but if there's an easier way of doing it, why not? And it may even lead me towards that AEW women's title. Brit Baker seems a bit off after that comment. And she responds with, Chris Statlander, alien whatever the hell you are, you need to keep your nose out and don't even think about booping me in the ring tonight, otherwise you'll have no teeth left. Do aliens even have teeth? And then they both walk away. So the segment rating got A31, Marty Bell getting better at her gimmick, so the potential's there, without doubt. We uh, continue on. She got penalised for an awful gimmick, even though she's getting better at her gimmick. So we'll get there eventually, I'm sure. But overall, 
decent, could have been better, but we transition into the match between Marty Bell and Britt Baker. They team up to take on Chris Statlander and Sadie Gibbs. Um, had a decent reaction from the crowd, subpar wrestling. Finished within 12 minutes 59, quite a longish uh, women's tag team bout. Uh, but it was Marty Bell and Britt Baker that come out with the win. Um, after Britt Baker pinned Chris Statlander with a fast roll-up. So keeping Chris Statlander uh, strong because I want to keep her in the title picture for Nyla Rose's AEW Women's Championship. Um, the only red here was Chris Statlander and Sadie, Sadie Gibbs didn't work well as a team and I expected that. Um, I know it was just thrown together but it was Chris Statlander siding with Sadie Gibbs after she got beat down on Dynamite. But this match is just going to continue, uh, well, advance the storyline for the AEW Women's Championship, um, as you'll see there. But it got a rating of 46, not bad. We move on to our next angle. The first ever time Tony Khan is seen on AEW telly as an authoritative figure. And he's uh, sat behind a huge desk, as you'd expect, being the son of a billionaire that he is. And he goes on to say... Bash at the Beach is such an iconic and historic event in the world of professional wrestling. I think it's only right I make this announcement here tonight. Start next week on Dynamite, we will begin a tournament to determine the first ever winner of the new championship here in AEW, the TNT Championship. Brackets will be announced next week on Dynamite. Don't miss it. Thank you. So that rating gets um, a 70. Really impressed with that after Tony Khan features for the first time on AEW television. Again, if you guys want to see more of this AEW TEW save, you'll be able to see the brackets, you'll be able to see who wins the TNT Championship for the first time ever. Moving on, we've got another interview with Dash Gonzalez, who's standing backstage, and she goes on to say, with me at this time, the Young Bucks. Tonight's main event sees you come up against the inner circle. How are you feeling? Matt Jackson replies with, We're feeling great. We got a big win on Dynamite this past week against the Lucha Brothers, but after what happened between Cody, Moxley, Jericho and Sammy, we felt we had to lend a hand. Which brings us to tonight's main event. And then Nick Jackson adds, That's right, this thing has been going on far too long now between us and the Elite and those in the inner circle. It needs to end. Plus tonight, could be a chance for us to make a statement, get us back on track towards those AEW World Tag Team Championships. Obviously we know that the Young Bucks had that amazing match in real life against their elite friends in Kenny Omega and Hangman Alan Page, so we might be heading towards that at some point, but for the time being we've got the elite still feuding against the Inner Circle, we've still got the Young Bucks against Santana and Ortiz. We move on to another segment from MJF who stood outside his mansion by his pool and he goes on to say just a quick PSA and a warning to Sean Spears I'm still waiting I'm putting Wardlow in action tonight to get him ready for when he pays Tully a visit and then you'll be next and that got a rating of 74 again really impressed with that it's just a simple freestyle angle but of course it is Maxwell Jacob Freeman after all uh, who got a bonus for being an amazing heel. The road agent was Arn Anderson. And I'm sure it shares uh, a few tips with cutting those decent promos. We move on to the next match then, which MJF set up, and it's between Wardlow and Joey Janela. And about that had great heat and good wrestling. Wardlow defeated Joey Janela within 10 minutes. 9 minutes 44 by Pinfall with a Splash Mountain Powerbomb. This was just a, a cool the crowd, calm the crowd down type of match. Getting them ready for uh, the main event. And here is the dirt sheet. He got bonus Wardlow for being well suited to the style of match. It was a, well not so much a squash, a squash match as we've seen with Lance Archer over these uh, two episodes. You can see the match prestige very low, but that would do. I mean, he got a bonus for squash master attribute, but I'm sure. In real life, Joey Janela would have put up a bit more of a fight than maybe the likes of Peter Avalon or, or Marco Stunt. We move on to the next segment then. It's uh, Dasha backstage once more. She says, with me at this time, the inner circle. Gentlemen, tonight's main event sees you all up against Jericho cuts in. That stupid idiot, John Maxley. 
who stole my AEW world title. Also dipshit Cody, who I beat back at full gear so he can no longer fight for the AEW title. And the Young Bucks? The not so Young Bucks. Have you seen how old they are now? Tonight Dash and me, my inner circle, as less ex-gods, will end the Elite. It's that simple. We're done here. The inner circle walk away with Jake Hager staring down the camera. Most noticeable from this segment was that Dasher uh, clearly enjoyed having the freedom to go off script and perform well, which was uh, interesting to see. I put her on scripts for all the other interviews uh, earlier on in the show and uh, obviously forgot to put her on script for this one, but it's worked out in favor of, uh, of going off script, so I'm happy with that. Got a segment rating of 54. Jericho got a bonus for a great gimmick, being an amazing heel, everything under the sun for Jericho. He is the top of his game at the moment. So we move on to the main event of AEW Bash at the Beach. And about that have fantastic heat, great wrestling, Moxley, Cody, the Young Bucks defeated the Inner Circle. When Matt Jackson pinned Santana with a handful of tights, which is very out of character of uh, Matt Jackson. It's something, of course, you would have expected from one of the elite, but it's Matt Jackson playing them at their own game, and they got the win. But also, this result allows uh, the story between the elite and the inner circle to continue in that sense. The inner circle will be incensed that uh, Matt Jackson cheated almost to win this uh, main event. So it's leaving it wide open still to continue this story. It only got a segment rating of 67. We've had better matches as we've seen over these two episodes. But you can see Cody, Moxley, Jackson, they're all getting uh, bonuses. That's Matt and Nick Jackson, Jericho, a bonus there for star quality. Le Champion, as he is, and Sammy Guevara. Happy to see him getting bonus bonuses as well. I'm losing my voice here. John Moxley was penalized for uh, being enabled to use high-risk moves. So there we go anyway. If we go ahead and finish the show. Just pull that right up to the top there. So 67 overall. Have we beaten Dynamite? No, we haven't. Got an overall rating of 67. I don't know about you guys, but I felt as though this bash at the beach was better than, uh, than the Dynamite that I put out. So we'll, we'll finish the show. That's going to be it for these, well, this two-part special. Once again, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you want to see more of TEW here on the channel? Do you want to see more of this save with AEW? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching.